Okay, here's warm-up number 51. Going to do some factoring first. So um, if this is factorable, this trinomial, it will factor in this format, and it is, it is factorable. Okay, and I'm going to use a, a diamond problem to figure out what the, goes in the back of uh, each parentheses. So I take the a negative 2, make sure the negative comes with that, and that goes up there on the top of my diamond problem. The negative 15 is going to go on the bottom. I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative 2 and multiply to negative 15. So if you think about the different ways to multiply to get negative 15, um, there's two different ways, 1 times negative 15 or negative 1 times 15. Those don't add up to negative 2, though. So let's try a 3 and a 5. Um, I could do 3 times negative 5 or negative 3 times positive 5. So only one of these four combos is going to work, and it's this one. That's the one that adds up to negative 2. And that tells me what goes in the back of my parentheses. And then this is factored. I should always check these for a common factor at the beginning of the problem. I didn't say that, but this one doesn't have a common factor. So um, that's it. Okay. Um, it gets a little more complicated on this next problem because I have a number in front of the x squared. So check if you can factor it out, but I don't have even numbers back there, so I can't factor out the 2. So I'm going to do uh, what I call a uh, modified diamond problem. I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it. I'm going to pull it over and multiply it by the negative 3. So I'm going to change this trinomial into um, x squared plus 5x, and then 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6. Okay, so that 2, I kind of just combine it with that piece. Now this um, trinomial I can factor like I did um, the previous, the one in the previous problem. I'm looking for two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to negative 6. So let's think about ways to multiply to get negative 6. Uh, okay, I got those, and I have 2 and negative 3, or negative 2 and positive 3. So looking for a comma that adds up to positive 5. This is the only one out of those four. It's tempting to use the 2 and the 3 because 2 plus 3 is 5, but I can't do that when one of I can't get to 5 when one of them is negative. So that's my only winning combo. So negative 1 and positive 6 is what should go in back of these, com these uh, parentheses. Okay, but that, this is not my final answer because this is that, that blue trinomial factor. It's not the original one. Okay, I changed the original problem. Now I've got to change this answer. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to take the um, number parts and divide them by something. That something is going to be whatever I multiplied by at the beginning, in this case, 2. So I'm um, dividing in both those spots by 2. Okay? And I want to simplify these as much as I can. So that second parentheses will be x plus 3. The first parentheses, I can't reduce 1 half any further. And so if you still have a fraction after reducing, take the denominator, pull it out in front of the x. Then um, the 1 will fall to the ground. And there's my final answer. And you could uh, test this by multiplying it back together. It should give you 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. You'd have to FOIL it to multiply it back together. OK? All right. And then going way back, I think, to chapter 3, if I'm remembering correctly. All right. So here I've got two parallel lines. I like to call those tracks. And then I've got a transversal that crosses over the two parallel lines. So I'm thinking about this angle pair. They're both on the inside of the tracks, on the interior. They're on the same side of the transversal, so they're not alternate interiors. These are going to be consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles are not congruent when, when the tracks are parallel. And just visually, you can see, well, this one, it says it's 133, so it's obtuse. And this one looks acute. So if that one's acute, there's no way they'd be con congruent. But they are, um, they are uh, going to be supplementary when the tracks are, are parallel. So I can say. Um, Measure of angle 1 plus 133 is going to equal 180 degrees. So it didn't ask me the theorem, but I just used the consecutive interior angle theorem. Interior angle theorem. OK. All right. And then let's just solve that. So I'm just subtracting 133. And that's going to come out to 47. So the measure of angle. 1 would be 47 degrees. Make sure you have the degree symbol in your final answer because we want you want to say what units you're using to measure that angle. Okay. All right, this next one, I've got these uh, parallel lines. 
This time, um, they're on the interior again, but this time they're on different sides of the transversal, so these would be alternate interior angles. Okay, so it doesn't ask me again which theorem I'm using, but I'm going to use the alternate interior angles theorem. And that allows me to say that these two angles are going to be congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent when the, um, when the tracks are parallel. Okay, and then I'll start solving for x. Subtracting 5x from both sides. Let's combine my x terms. Now I'm going to add 34. And divide by 3, and x is going to equal 12. Still on screen here, just barely on screen. Okay, x equals 12. There we go. All right, that's the end of the warm up. See you next time.